Amen. It's good to have the opportunity, amen, to be in the house of the Lord tonight. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised. The word of the Lord says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Friend, the Lord is in this place tonight. In your homes tonight, God is in this place. I'm just going to ask us right now, if we could just lift our hands to the Lord in this building, right where you're at at home tonight. Father, we love you. your people, Lord, that your people would be strengthened tonight by your word. Father, I pray that faith would be elevated in this house. Lord, among your people, that their faith would be elevated. Lord, as we enter into your presence tonight, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would speak faith. Lord, into our ears, that we would understand and believe and trust that you are in complete control. You are in complete control. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. No doubt tonight as the church, as we look around the world, we are in troubling times. We are in perilous times. The voice of the enemy is ringing louder and louder. And you and I have got to trust and believe that no matter what we see, that our God is in complete control. Amen. That our God is still on the throne and He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Friend, I come to tell you tonight and declare in the face of the enemy, friend, that our God reigns. Friend, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Friend, he's unchanging. He's never been defeated. He's never been cast down. Friend, and it ain't going to begin today. I'm telling you, child of God, that he's still in control. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn to 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. Can we just pray for just a minute? Praise the Lord. Turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. I had been working on a praying and working on a message all day. And I feel the Lord moving me in this direction. And I know that he knows best. Thank you, Lord. 
John chapter 11 and verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Psalm 49 and 15. Psalm chapter 49 and 15. It says, But God shall redeem my soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive me. The word grave there translates into the Greek as sheol which is the abode of the dead, hell, the pit, or the place of no return. The place of no return. Friend, tonight you might think that you're in a place of no return as we look around the world and we open our eyes and we see the destruction that's taking place all around us. It would become very, very easy in this present hour to become gripped with fear by not understanding that everything is going to serve a purpose as we see this thing unravel and unfold like the pastor said just a minute ago that all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose I'm telling somebody that your present situation does not have the ability to destroy you or tear you down lift your eyes unto the hills which cometh your help for your help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth your help cometh from him Do not allow the enemy to discourage you and rob your faith in your God. That's why David said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He said, Magnify your God in the present place that you're standing. Make your God big. Though the enemy is roaring like a lion, friend, you got to understand. That Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is still the Lion of Judah. Friend, and he's coming back to conquer every adversary and every foe that stands against him. Repay every devil. He's going to repay every spirit that's got their head lifted up right now against the children of the living God. Friend, he's coming back as a conquering king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The God of co-creation that spread the earth abroad by himself with none beside him. Friend, he didn't seek counsel. He didn't have to ask nobody for no help. All that he did was speak the word, friend, and light come into existence. There's power in the word of God. You got to declare the word of God in this present hour. You got to declare the word of God over your life and over your children's life and over the church. We've got to pray for one another. He said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Church, we got to begin to pray. There's got to be a cry of desperation that gets deep down inside of us. And we trust and know 
that it don't take nothing but one word from God. And the place that we're standing right now. Woo! Holy Ghost talk! I said the prayer of faith. Friend, when you offer up your prayers to God, you got to have faith in His ability to answer you. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For he that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh. It shall be open. Friend, the church needs to be knocking on the door right now. God! God! There's a desperation that needs to resound from the altar of the saints. We got to get desperate with our faith. The church has got to get desperate in this hour. And believe that your God is able. He's able. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. David said, Thou will not leave my soul in hell. That's right. Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Come on. Hallelujah. Neither. Neither suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Friend, God didn't say we weren't never going to go through hell. God didn't say we weren't never going to face trials. God didn't never say we weren't going to be in the valley. But what he did say, one word that he did declare, friend, is that he would not leave you there. He's not going to leave you in hell. Don't let that devil lie to you and say that the way it is right now is the way it's always going to be. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord mighty in battle. As the prophet Isaiah seen the king sitting upon the throne and it says that the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Church, I feel the Holy Ghost speaking in this house tonight. The power of God is moving in this place right now. If you'll open up your hearts, the power of God is going to move right there in your home, friend. If you'll open up your heart and receive the word of the Lord tonight. Friend, your faith is going to be elevated to another level. Your confidence in your God is going to be elevated. When you begin to understand and realize who it really is, the God that you serve. And at the same time, the authority and the power that's dwelling on the inside of you. The prophet said in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. High and lifted up, friend, he's still sitting there today. He's still sitting on the throne today. The adversary, the devil, he ain't sitting on the throne, friend. But the one true living God, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's still sitting on the throne. The Bible says that his train, his train filled the temple. What was that train? It was a representation of all the victories that he had already won. In old time, them kings, after they would conquer a king, friend, they would cut off a piece of that king's coat and they would sew it to the end of their train. And the longer, my God, I feel the Lord. 
The longer that that train was, friend, the more victorious and the more of a conquering king that that man was. It says that his train filled the temple. Friend, the glory of the Lord surrounds you and I. The victory of the Lord surrounds you and I. He's still Jehovah Nisi, our victory. And you got to believe and receive what God is trying to tell you tonight. The Apostle Paul said, but thanks be to God. 1 Corinthians 15, who giveth us the victory. Uh, I said he hands you the victory. Because the victory belongs to him, friend. And because the victory belongs to him, we can rest in sure and know that the victory belongs to us as well. Get with me tonight. In your house, you need to be shouting with a voice of triumph. Understanding that you are a victory in Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to just say that right now. I'm the victor. My God's never been defeated. He ain't gonna start today. This thing didn't catch him off guard. It's all a part of his plan. I said it's all a part of his purpose, friend. And all we got to do is remain steadfast to the end until we receive that victor's crown on the other side. Child of God, don't quit. Fear not. Don't be cast down and discouraged. Lift your head up to the sky for your redemption. Draw it now. song that God has given to you rejoice in the Lord always again I say rejoice in every season in every circumstance in every situation rejoice in the Lord been born again of water and spirit friend been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost I'm telling you tonight you got a reason to rejoice you got a reason to give thanks there's something about a thankful heart friend There's something about a thankful heart that when you begin to give thanks, he said, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter his courts with what? With praise. There's something about when you begin to give thanks to your God for all that he's done for you, that all that trouble and sorrow just seem like nothing. Friend, it'll look like a small thing because you're giving testimony to the goodness of your God. Rejoice always, the Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5. He said, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Come on. Hallelujah. You want to 
don't make the devil mad, friend. You just start thanking God right there where you're sitting right now. You want that devil to flee the scene where you're sitting at. You just start being thankful for all that God has done for you. Place of no return. So often times we can come to a place in life whereas it seems as if there is no way out. No hope for a better day. No reason to keep going. People come to accept failure. They come to accept the so-called fact that nothing is ever going to change. It's inevitable, inevitable, they say. My life is too far gone. I've wasted too much time. This must be the way that it's always going to be. Friend, if you'll lend me your ear just for a moment. I came to proclaim the fact that there is new life available. I'm talking about right in the middle of everything that's going on right now. I'm talking to sinners tonight and I'm talking to saints. I'm talking about to every individual who will heed and yield to the voice of the Lord tonight. And those who will respond to the voice of Jesus Christ. That there is new life for you right where you're at. John chapter 5 and verse 25. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming. And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. Friend, there's a fresh start. I'm not talking about all this stuff just disappearing and going away. But I'm talking a fresh start for you spiritually as you walk through this trial, as you walk through this tribulation, and the power of the Holy Ghost, that as you step out your door in the morning, friend, that you'll approach this thing with a new faith, that you'll begin to see your God directly in the middle of it. If you'll hear what I'm trying to tell you tonight. There's a fresh start, a new day, a spiritual dawning, friend, a clean slate, a do-over, a new beginning, a renaissance to your life of hopelessness, a light that is looking to shine into a life that's full of darkness. Isaiah prophesied in his book, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death he said I'm going to shine my light into those dark places that you are walking and living in right now the glory of God It's going to begin to shine upon you. Because you're receiving by faith what He's speaking into your life tonight. Praise the Lord. Friend, I worked on a message all day, and this ain't it. I'd been praying and I, I knew it. And I believe it was till I walked into this place. Till I walked up here behind this pulpit, friend. And then God spoke these words to me. You speak life. You speak life into my people. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Friend, there's life going to come into them dead places in your life if you begin to walk by faith and not by sight. You've got to walk by faith. Yeah. Come on. 
It don't matter what you see. I feel like Elijah tonight as he spoke to that servant and he prayed to God. He said, open his eyes that he might see that there's more for us. Friend, there's more for you than against you. If you teach yourself to wait upon the Lord, the strength that's missing in your life, I'm talking about spiritual strength, that you're missing will begin to be fulfilled. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint, friend. Church of the living God, we've got to learn to tarry in a place of prayer. You've got to learn that you've got to get along with God. Friend, you ought to be able to get along with God 30 minutes a day. At the minimum, you ought to be able to separate yourself to God 30 minutes a day and allow the strength of God, friend, to come into your life. Friend, that you begin to acknowledge Him and realize that He is in control, friend. And you walk out of that place of prayer with your faith renewed. You can't wait on the pastor to preach it into you, friend. you got to learn how to get it yourself. This place is empty right now. There's about four folks in here. But if you're sitting in your home, you got to learn how to get along with God and let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding become a part of your life. The word of the Lord says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He said, be anxious for nothing. But in everything in prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Okay? There's the first step. What did he say? And the peace of God. He said, if you do this, God will do this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will what? Will guard? The peace of God is going to set a barrier up over your mind so that the voice of the enemy cannot penetrate your thought process. The peace of God, the Spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against the enemy that's torment your mind. That's Bible. That's Isaiah 59 and 16. There's a standard that's going to be raised up. And because you and I cannot cast down vain imaginations by ourselves, only through the power of the Holy Ghost, you're going to be able to cast down them vain imaginations that the enemy is tormenting you with day in and day out. That's trying to rob your life and your faith for you. For the Bible says that the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. What does he want to destroy? What does he want to steal? The life that God has freely given you, friend. And you've got to know and believe that you've got to have faith to receive the life that God has given you. I hope I'm making sense right now. I know this is a shotgun message. I know it's going this way and going that way. But you got to hear me in this place tonight. you got to have faith in your God. I want to tell somebody who's watching online tonight look unto Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith quit got your eyes down on the ground 
friend, and begin to look up to the sky. Come on. And understand and know that the present situation that you're living in has not separated you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. The Bible said that you are more than a conqueror through him who loved us, friend. It said that you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. The Bible says that you always triumph in Christ Jesus. He said that we are victorious in him. And he's came to give you life. And life more abundant. Jesus proclaimed in John chapter 14, he said, I am the way. There ain't but one way, folks. There ain't but one way. Peter said, Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of. Of the Holy Ghost, friend. Jesus Christ is the only name by which we are saved. Friend, there ain't one way to eternity. And His name is Jesus. He paved the way at Calvary. Where He confronted death, hell, and the grave. Demonstrated His power over it. He gives and sustains life. Amen. He's going to sustain you during this time. He's going to keep you in this time. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High Come on. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty Friend. You've got you to gotta remain under the shadow of His wings. You've got to find yourself in a secret place with Him. You've got to feed yourself good things, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are pleasant. Whatever things are of virtue, whatever things are of good report. He said, meditate. Meditate on these things. Friend, you've got to allow your mind to rest in the ability and the goodness of God. Otherwise, everything that we are surrounded by will consume you and destroy you and take you out and rob your faith. But you got to continue to trust Him. Though you're walking through heartache, though you're walking through trials, trust your God. Trust your God. He meets our needs and necessities in life, friend. He's still Jehovah Jireh. Our provider. Troubles, sorrows, and hurts. Tonight, child of God. Tonight, nothing, nothing is outside of Him. From the very beginning of time, by the voice of God, creation assembled itself to the Creator. It was by the commandment, let there be, that light manifested itself. There was not another source that God looked towards to produce light, but light was in Him. John the Revelator declared, he saw speaking in heaven, Speaking of heaven, the city that hath no need of sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Friend, your God is light tonight. The dark place where you're sitting. Place of no return.
your God is able to shine light. If you'll receive by faith. Amen. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord? go back to our text tonight John chapter 11 Bible says now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany a town meaning misery the town of Mary and her sister Martha it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Behold, Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. Your current situation does not, to not, does not mean that God does not love you. The current situation of Lazarus did not mean that he had been separated from the love of God. For the Apostle Paul penned these words in the 8th chapter of Romans. He said, Who shall separate us from the love of God? He said, shall tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril or sword. He said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The apostle said, for I am persuaded. You got to be persuaded tonight. You got to believe tonight. You got to be confident tonight that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. His love for us is unfailing. Friend, it's never changing. Despite our circumstances and situations, His love for us remains the same. His love for you remains the same. There was a reason for the devastating condition that not only Lazarus was in, but his family as well. That's why verse 4 said, For this sickness is not unto death. Jesus, my God. Jesus spoke to the disciples and he told them, He said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. Thereby, you got to know and believe that if you're walking through hell tonight, Man, if you're living in turmoil, if you're sick in body, I'm telling you, I'm speaking to somebody right now, that this sickness is not under death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. Thereby, Lazarus' sickness was not unto death. He was in this predicament for the glory of God. He was to die so the unprecedented power of the Almighty could be manifested. The Bible says, Now Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. When he heard that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he saith to his disciples, Let us go again unto Judea. So Jesus receives news about his friend Lazarus being sick. And Jesus, instead of moving at that very moment, he just sits still in one place. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth... Him. These things said he after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. 
how be it Jesus spake of his death but the disciples thought that he had spoke of him taking a rest and sleep and then Jesus speaks very very plainly into these men's lives he says Lazarus is dead he said and I am glad for your sakes to the intent that you may believe to the intent that I can build your faith hear me right now God is building your faith God is teaching you and showing you how to build your faith in Him the only way for us to grow is to exercise the only way for you to grow your faith is to be put in situations that causes you to activate your faith He's got good intentions for where you are right now. He said, Nevertheless, let us go unto Him. Jesus was glad that Lazarus was dead because his intentions had all the time been that he would make believers out of his disciples and others by displaying the resurrecting power that was dwelling on the inside of him friend he has good intentions for where you are verse 17 says that Jesus showed up and he found that Lazarus had been laying in the grave four days already and this brings us back to verse 6 where it says that even Jesus had heard that he was sick. He abode two days in the same place where he was. This is extremely significant because the journey from Bethany to Jerusalem was about two miles, which was a day's journey. One might ask the question, why would Jesus delay instead of moving towards the problem as soon as he received the news of the illness? By Jewish law, the spirit of a man or a woman was said to remain with the body through the third day, and there was hope of resuscitation of life to the individual. So in three days' time, there was still hope for recovery, that nothing supernatural had to take place. So by hesitating and arriving on the fourth day, it would give his disciples, the Jews... Martha and Mary, no other explanation. But God had performed this miracle. Lazarus' sickness was not enough. But Jesus allowed this man. Jesus allowed this man to get to a place that was thought to be a place of no return. Come on. There's individuals tonight as you look around and you see where you're sitting at that you think that you have come to a place of a point of no return but the thing is tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ a toothache ain't no harder to heal than anything else to God. Whether you got $2 in the bank or you got a hundred friend, it ain't nothing for God to give you a financial miracle right there in the place that you're sitting. Yes, yes. God's able to turn your present situation around. It don't matter how big. It don't matter how big it might seem to you. It don't matter if you're looking around and you're saying, I'm at a point of no return. I'm telling you that God just waiting until the fourth day. He's just waiting till you get to that place where you can't only pick yourself up off the ground and He's going to come in in the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost and speak life into your situation. As Jesus approached the stone, friend, He told him, roll away the stone. Martha said, Lord, but by this time He stinketh. It's already been four days. 
You showed up a little bit too late. If you would have showed up a day ago, I believe you could have done it. But because you showed up on the fourth day, I don't think that there's anything that you can do. And the Bible says that Jesus groaned within himself because as he looks down on the infirmities that we're dealing with, you got to understand the Bible says that he's touched with them. And there's something that rises up inside of him. And when he said, roll away the stone, friend, he said, Lazarus! Lazarus! There's some of us right now, and Jesus is crying out your name. And he's telling you to come forth. He said, come out of that grave that they're trying to put you in. He's saying, you've got to be obedient. Hear what I'm saying tonight. Hear me crying out to you and come forth. The Bible says that he that was bound. He that was bound came forth in grave clothes. They'd already put the garments of death on him. They'd already sealed his fate. But Jesus spoke these words. He said, Loose him. God wants to loose you tonight. God wants to give you freedom tonight. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He wants to free you from the bondage that you've been living in. He wants to break the chains and the fetters off you that you've been bound by. He's saying tonight in the Holy Ghost, loose him and let him go. If you move by faith, According to his word. My God, I feel the Lord. Come on. I feel a fighting spirit on me right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. If we could stand in this place right now. If you could stand in your homes. Friend, if this word's been for you tonight, if you would open up your heart, if you'd begin to cry out, friend, right where you're at, you ain't got to wait on a piano to strike up. You ain't got to wait on somebody to be standing there beside you to pray for you. I said the Spirit of the living God is in your midst. If you'll just acknowledge Him right there where you're at, God is going to do something in your life. God is going to resurrect you to new life. God is going to restore you. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Be loosed and let Him go. Kindo ramakaya ramosoto. Isile marakia ramatea. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Church, we got to be a people that begins to pray. We got to be a people in these last days that begins to cry out in the name of Jesus, understanding that we got the power and the authority to loose the grip of the enemy that might be on our brothers and sisters' life. To loose the grip of the enemy that's upon this nation. To loose the grip of the enemy that's on the lives of loved ones and sinners. We got to understand tonight. That the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. 
Sinner, if you're bound tonight by drug addiction, alcoholism, adultery, homosexuality, depression, friend, it don't matter what you're bound by tonight, the authority of Jesus Christ has the ability to loose you from the place that you are. Jesus Christ died on Calvary just for you. If you would have been the only one walking the face of this earth, he would have still went to the cross and shed his blood that you might be saved. There ain't nothing that you've done. There ain't nothing that you can do that God will not forgive you for because his grace is sufficient for thee. And his mercy triumphs over judgment. If you repent, that means to turn your back on sin. To turn away from the old way that you've been living. You will not enter into the kingdom of God with sin in your life. But if you'll be willing to turn away, Jesus Christ is willing to give you new life right now. This very moment. This very minute. God wants to give you life. And life more abundant. Saint of God, you sit there in your home tonight and you feel dried up spiritually. If you just begin to open up your mouth and cry unto the Lord, David said, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord and he delivered me from my troubles. If you'll begin to cry out to God and allow the Spirit of the living God to begin to flow you through you, God's going to refresh and restore you right now. We can lift our hands in this place if you're not. Father, we love you. Lord, we magnify you. We glorify you, Father. Lord, and we thank you for life. Father, you said that your words are spirit and life. God, and as your word went forth tonight, Lord, that there was life being spoken into the ears of the hearers. Lord, I ask for our faith to be elevated. That the faith of the saints fail not. Lord, I ask you to baptize us with the spirit of prayer and dedication to you. Father, that we would discipline ourselves to find a place of prayer daily. Lord, that we might grow in you, be strengthened by you. Be sanctified by you. God, that we might be a pure and holy vessel acceptable in your sight. Father, I ask you to touch the Simmons family tonight. Lord, we know that you're able. God, to step into that situation. Father, and heal and cleanse and restore. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for Acts 2 Ministries. I pray for Pastor Odom and his wife. Father, that you would strengthen them. 
God, that you would encourage them. Father, that you would bless them with fresh anointing. Father, by the endurance of the Holy Ghost, that they would be able to run the race, God, that you've set before them. That they could lead your people in the direction that you would have them go. Father, I pray for every saint that could be gripped with the spirit of fear to be released right now. Father, for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And your perfect love casteth out all fear. Lord, I pray for their eyes to be enlightened. God, that they would be spiritually minded in the days to come. For a spiritual mind, your word says, is life and peace. Lord, our entire assembly, Father, we lift them up to you right now in the name of Jesus. Every, every church across our nation, Lord. Father, we lift them up to you. That you would put a hedge of protection around them. that a fear and a reverence for you would come into our lives. Lord, in a spirit of humility would be birthed inside of us. Lord, that we would understand that we have need of you. And we would continue and begin to pray like never before. Father, we need your intervention in this country. Lord, that we've turned our back on you. And because of that, because of sin, there's destruction all around us. Lord, I pray for the hearts of the unbelievers that you would turn them to you. that they would begin to see that you are the only God. The one true living God. And you stand alone, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the authority of the Word of God, I ask these things. Amen. Amen. Could we clap our hands unto the Lord? up your head church for your redemption draweth nigh Jesus Christ is on his way Jesus name amen praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord amen I am thankful tonight for the preached word Amen. we've got to have it we've got to have it we've got to have it yes Yes. Thankful for the anointed preached word oh, yes. 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 and the effectual fervent prayer mm. of the righteous man or woman or boy or girl That's right. avails much. Yes. We've got to have prayer. We've got to have fasting. I had the uh, opportunity to visit with our presbyter, Brother Horn, yesterday, and man, we, we got to talking about the Bible and the things of the Bible and 
my Lord, the Holy Ghost came in that place, and, and, and he said the same thing that I'd been thinking, the same thing that was preached, it takes prayer and it takes fasting. Mm -hmm. It took it in Jesus' day. It took it on the day of Pentecost. It takes it today. Yeah. It took it when our fathers walked the earth. It's going to take it today. And if he tarries his coming, it's going to take it next year. It's going to take it the next century. Right. We will never be able to do without prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for Brother, uh, Brother Miller and Sister Miller for being here. Amen. Thank you for preaching to us. Amen. 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 Let's keep all of our folks lifted up in prayer. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you. And we shall see you the next time. Amen. Good word, good word. Good word.